What's up guys, Grandmaster Igor Spirinov is here and today I'm happy to share with you the top 3 most common opening errors of all. They were played in roughly 4 million games and you definitely need to be aware of them. Alright, so first of all, let's get to the most common opening position on amateur level. Pawn e4, after that, black responds with pawn to e5, white continues with knight of 3, knight c6 and bishop c4. Pros prefer playing bishop b5, but on amateur level, most people play bishop to c4. Uh, here, the most natural move for black is knight to f6, and there are different ways for white to play here, and we're going to analyze a couple very common errors. Once again, they were played by millions of people, so that first of all, you stay away from those errors yourself, and secondly, if your opponent plays those wrong moves, you know how to take advantage and to win. Alright, so the very first one. Sometimes your opponent does not want to get involved into a very complicated two knights game after a knight going to g5, because there's a ton of theory there. So sometimes your opponent may think, okay, let me just develop, let me castle. And in this case, usually black responds with something like bishop c5, playing some normal development move. But what, what I want you to do instead is to take advantage of this inaccuracy, because this is indeed already a kind of wrong move. And what you can do is you can just grab the central pawn, knight takes e4. And if we take a look at the statistics he over here, we'll see that the most played move by far with white is the move rook e1, which is already a losing mistake. And it's hard to see it, of course, right now, because rook e1 seems to be very tempting. You know, the rook attacks this knight over here. Also, it x-rays potentially this pawn on e5. The king looks like white is about to start some massive attack. But you can upset white by a very strong move, pawn d5. Not only you don't touch your knight, but you counter-attack over here uh, this bishop, which already gives you once again a winning position as early as move 5. So, once again, first of all, let's uh, take note that you're a pawn up, you grab this pawn on e4 happily, now you're attacking this bishop. White will play bishop b5, and at this point your opponent probably still stays optimistic. You know, there is still potentially some d3 threat, and you know, this pawn is under an attack, there is this pin, the rook is getting active along the e-file, and white may think that they'll have some nasty attack along the next few moves. But once again, you can upset white with the move bishop c5. Once again, you counterattack, you don't defend. This time we're threatening this pawn on f2, we're attacking it twice, and white needs to do something about that. If your opponent is a decent chess player, he or she may think, okay, I've got the solution. And it's the move pawn d4. Looks very strong at first, white is capitalizing on this pin, and for that reason your knight can't make a move. And if you recapture by the pawn, white is going to recapture just as well. And once again, it looks like white is creating some threats using this pin. Again, the knight cannot move. And the rook is now open along the e-file. But once again, you make a very simple move. You simply castle, neutralize the problem of this pin so that the knight is free to move and is threatening to capture the knight. Um, what can white do now? Well, first of all, this knight is hanging, right? You're now threatening to simply capture it with either a bishop or a knight. And that's why in most cases, white realized that the knight cannot really make a move, because if it moves, you know, it opens up this diagonal and black is going to capture the pawn with a check and only after that will recapture the knight. So that is losing. That's why white don't play that. Instead, they think, okay, let me just trade here on c6 and after that do something else. And first of all, I mean, you can just recapture and you're still maintaining a pawn up and a winning position. But if that's not enough, you can completely demolish white with another unexpected sacrifice, knight takes f2. Definitely white didn't expect that to happen. Well, white is pretty much forced to take, and now you continue with queen to f6, check to the king, that was the idea, you're attacking the king as well as this knight. And your reason here is pretty simple, you're gonna pick up the knight with check, and after that you're gonna pick up the bishop. So you are just getting another pawn advantage and you're exposing white's king. So the king has to move, let's say. Now you can take this knight with either a bishop or a queen. Both ways are equally good. Let's say you trade queens along the way, check to the king, king moves. Now you finally recapture that hanging bishop. And as a result of this little tactical operation, you're two pawns up, you're having two bishops and a completely winning position. And white was playing similarly natural moves, but somehow was completely destroyed. Alrighty, let's move on to the second most common mistake, which is once again in this most common opening position. Here black has just played knight to f6, potentially attacking this pawn, and we already know that castling is actually wrong, although it seems like such a standard move to play. Now, if not castling, that's what white is going to do here. Once again, if your opponent is uh, just an average Joe, he or she may not wish to get into some very complicated lines and may think, okay, let me simply develop a knight. Black attacked this pawn, let me defend it. What can be more logical than that? 
Although knight c3 still is actually wrong. And you can take advantage of that with the same tactical motif. You can actually still grab this pawn on e4, ignoring the fact that it is defending. And that usually confuses your opponents, because after they capture, you play pawn d5. That's the point. Now we're attacking these two minor pieces, and that's why you're going to take back your piece on the next move. And uh, what's really nice about this is that in the vast majority of the cases, your pawn is confused here. They didn't expect this to happen. They thought that this pawn on e4 is defended and you can't capture it, but you did so anyway. And in the majority of the games, white players played here the, the fatal mistake. Bishop takes d5, because they realize that they're going to lose one of these pieces anyway, so they think, okay, let me at least grab a pawn along the way. And that is already a kind of a losing mistake, actually, because after queen takes d5, black gets such a dominant position that normally that should be winning. I know it may not look that way right now, but let me explain in just a second. First of all, we are, you know, attacking this knight, we're controlling the center. If white defends the knight somehow, we can play the bishop g4. This pin is also very annoying. White doesn't have a light square bishop, so they have nothing to oppose. They can't play something like bishop e2. Um, you know, on the next moves, you can castle queen side, you can play a 5, kicking this knight away, you can go knight d4, let's say take advantage of this pin, and your attack is just so easy and natural, and there is nothing I can do to counteract this. And um, let me just share with you one game real quick, which where I think white played some of the most common moves, pawn h3, doesn't change anything, you just go back, this pin is still annoying, and in this game white decided to play pawn g4 to neutralize the pin, and the pin is neutralized, but after bishop g6, this knight is now attacked twice, also, this is a weakness, a painful weakness for white. Anyway, white decided to defend the knight by playing queen e2. And black said, okay, you neutralized the pin, but now you've got this weakness, so let me take advantage of that. And black played pawn h5. Now we're threatening to capture over here, and notice that white cannot recapture because they'll lose the rook, right? So if white just develops somehow, let's say black takes here and white cannot recapture because this rook is handy, black would win. So let's take this back. White realized that they instead played knight c3, trying to kick off this queen. Black responded bishop b4, saying I'm not going back, I'm pinning this bishop, and now h takes g4 is still a threat. You can see how white's position falls apart, really. White played pawn g5, and black responded with knight to d4, attacking here all around. And after white captured it, white lost this rook in the corner, queen h1, check to the king. This knight potentially is hanging in some variations, and so black is completely winning within just a few moves. So you can see how this position is actually winning for black, because you've got such a strong attack against numerous white's weaknesses here. Going back to the starting position of this variation, knight c3 is actually not such a fatal mistake, but the real problem is white players usually don't know how to deal with this little combo knight takes and pawn takes d5. It's still a good, perfectly good way for you to play, but bishop takes d5 is a real error. So that's what gives black a winning position. Instead, white should save their bishop. Bishop is stronger than a knight, and so if we have a choice, white should opt for the bishop and play a bishop d3. In this case, we're giving up the knight, we're still getting a pawn, and that gives us an about equal position at the end. So if white knows that, they're gonna get away from this and, you know, get an about equal game. But in most cases, they aren't aware of this, and you just win. Also, I've got another video, which I'll link up there, where I analyze this position in greater details. It's, again, I think probably the most common opening error of all. So if you want to know, you know some other potential subversions, you may check out that video later. Some of you may wonder, Igor, but how about the main move, the main move knight to g5, which potentially leads to the fried liver attack if black doesn't know how to respond? In that case, guess what? We're gonna respond with the same move. That's what I love about this lesson. We're gonna play knight takes c4 regardless of what white plays. Once again, we're ignoring the fact that this pawn is defended, because we know that if white captures here, which is not a good move for white, we just play pawn d5 with all the same advantages that we analyzed in the previous version. So that's something that we're perfectly comfortable with. But instead, what white players do here usually is the move knight takes f7 because white realizes that, hey, we're attacking this pawn. And if white captures it with the knight, they realize that there is this deadly fork to the queen and rook, so they hope to simply grab one of these heavy pieces on the next move, and they think that this is resignable for black. But that's not really the case, and knight takes f7, strangely enough, is a bad mistake, because black has some really unexpected counterattack, queen h4. Threatening simply queen takes f2 checkmate. Well, at this point, white still has nothing to worry about. They think, okay, let me just castle, you know, the problem is solved. I'm still having this active knight attacking the rook, life is cool. But you once again confuse white with knight takes f2. Another tactical shot. From here, the knight is attacking the queen. Therefore, uh, you know, white will definitely capture this. And now you continue with bishop c5. So that's the point of your plan. Now this pins the rook down to the king, and the rook is still attacked by your queen. 
So White thinks, okay, let me defend it now. Queen of 3 is the most played move. And now after you just play Rook to F8, removing this Rook from danger and instead putting it on this active position, uh, somehow, strangely enough, you just look at the position, you realize that pretty much all of the white species are in danger. They are directly or indirectly attacked. So this rook is pinned and attacked by the bishop and the queen. So this bishop on c4 is attacked by the queen. Your rook is doing a good job attacking all of the white species along the f-file, potentially. And so white is in a massive trouble. In fact, white is completely lost. The most played move here by white is pawn g3, which doesn't really do anything. And you just start capturing everything. With your every move that you play, you start capturing a piece. It's almost like a give up chess for white, but they have no way out. And uh, now this knight is also pinned. Uh, not like this, like this. On the next map, you're on the next move. You're gonna grab the knight as well, and you know you have just an overwhelming material advantage, and you're completely winning here. Now we know what white should not do, and let's check out the correct way for white. After white playing knight g5, there is nothing wrong with that move. That is indeed one of the main moves in this position. And black responds with this uh, strange sacrifice, knight takes c4 once again. By the way, I've got a video about this variation just as well. If you haven't watched it, I would definitely recommend it. It's a very powerful gambit. I've won numerous games with it. Uh, now, after knight takes c4, the real error of white was knight takes f7. And it's hard to criticize white for that because it seems so advantageous. It seems like just winning for white instantaneously, but that's just not the case. Right, so the correct move for white here would be bishop takes f7. And after king goes, white should once again refrain from the most natural reaction, which would be knight takes e4. That does not give white an advantage. That's actually pretty good for black. After knight takes, you just pick up this bishop, then you play d5, and somehow it all rolls out in your favor. So knight takes e4 is not a troublesome move. But a much better option for white is pawn d4. That is the strongest according to computer. And if you don't want to get into complications, the easier way to play is pawn to d3. Uh, here's an interesting trick. Uh, black cannot really take here, because if black does, there's bishop takes g5. Notice this attack along the this diagonal to the king and queen, white's winning. Black can't do that, which means that instead of knight taking hero over g5, black has to retreat back to f6. And now because this bishop is somewhat hanging, you know, black can try to win it, white should bring the bishop back to safety, and that is the end of the forcing line, and white is gaining an upper hand here because of this awkward king on e7. That's still not the end of story, black can play d5 and continue the fight, but anyway, this position, objectively speaking, is in the white's favor. The additional videos that I've mentioned throughout this video will be in the description below the video or somewhere around me. Also, if you want to know all the secrets of the positional play, you are welcome to attend my free masterclass by clicking the link over there. Keep crushing and talk soon.